Good afternoon, everybody. I'm up here at the school. I'm going to do a lesson on brain pop for everyone. And what I found on, on brain pop this morning is a lesson on the coronavirus, which is why we are not in school. So we're just going to start this off. Ah, uh, ah, uh, nothing like an early morning jog. <coughs> Tim and Moby. I've been hearing lots of scary stuff in the news about the coronavirus. Can you tell me more about it, please? Thanks, Khalil. Sure thing, Khalil. Viruses are tiny particles that can invade living cells. Remember, we did viruses before and we've done our immune system. Viruses are different than bacteria. They don't work. Antibiotics won't help a person with a virus takes antivirals and it has to be the right thing for the particular virus. And right now they don't have the cure for the coronavirus. Viruses are not uh, complete cells. They have to come into a host, us. We would be the host when we get the virus and it attack goes into our cells so it can replicate and reproduce itself. There are millions of varieties with different behaviors, shapes, and structures. Coronaviruses are one group named for their crown-shaped outline. Four of these commonly infect humans. A lot of times when you get a cold, it's caused by a coronavirus. We've had coronaviruses around for probably forever. and it's, These are four common ones, but there's a lot more than that. The, this one, Viruses do what's called mutate, they change. And this coronavirus is a new changed virus, why they're calling it the COVID-19. Any virus has one goal, to replicate or make more copies of itself. Or reproduce itself. But it can't do that on its own, so it invades an organism and turns its cells into virus factories. This can be unpleasant for the host, the organism that the virus has infected. The new coronavirus typically causes coughing and fever. A healthy body can usually fight off this illness, known as COVID-19, on its own. Symptoms are mild for most people, especially kids. They're mild for most people, but here in the United States, there is a large percentage of people 18 to 40 something years old now that are being hospitalized with COVID-19, where the other countries didn't see that as much, so perhaps it's changed a little here. Or we are not taking it as seriously as we should be, and the people are just getting infected at higher rates. But in a body with weakened defenses, COVID-19 can become more severe and require medical treatment. Some people get seriously ill, and that's gotten everyone's attention. This new coronavirus was first identified in Wuhan, China. In late 2019, there was an outbreak. That's when a disease about this started spreading. About more and more people got sick, first in China and then around the world. Entire cities have been quarantined or closed off to slow the disease's spread. In a quarantine, Nobody comes into the city or leaves the city. Some of the cities in the United States now are going closer and closer to being quarantined. My brother just told me that in Wichita, Kansas, they have a stay at home order starting tonight for everyone other than essential. And he works in a grocery store and he's classified as essential. Fortunately, viruses can't get around without our help. And there's a lot we can do to not help them. Like washing your hands, especially after you use the bathroom and before you eat. That's always a good idea, and you probably already do it. Scrub with soap for at least 20 seconds to make sure you don't miss any spots. Whenever you cough or sneeze, cover your nose and mouth to help keep any germs contained. We've been teaching this for years. 
And if you're sick, avoid other people. You wouldn't want to infect them, even if it's a plain old cold. Well, when there's an outbreak where you live, experts recommend some added precautions, like social distancing, limiting close contact with other people, even if you're not sick. That's what. Hang on at home. This is what we're doing now, not coming to school, so there's not 12, 13, or in other classes, 30 or 40 people in this small of a space. Home with your family and keep up with your friends online. That gives the virus fewer opportunities to spread around. Lots of outbreaks have been stopped when enough folks just follow these simple rules. Yeah, it's true. Some people have died after being infected by the 2019 coronavirus. That's because the virus can infect a person's lungs and make it hard to breathe. Those are the stories we hear about most online and in the news. But the vast majority of cases have been mild. If you feel overwhelmed by the news, consider limiting how much you let in. Instead of cable news and social media, stick to sources like the World Health Organization. They'll give you the big picture, not just the scary snapshots that make the headlines. And they're organizing experts all over the world to get this coronavirus under control. Who do we need to listen to? We need to listen to people on CNN or regular news, news people. No, we need to listen to the experts from the World Health Organization. Still, it's totally normal if the situation's made you a little anxious. Talk. It should make you anxious. It's probably making your parents anxious. Everybody's a little bit anxious now at this time. If, if we all do what we're told to do, wash your hands, stay home, not go out where there's large groups, we can d diminish the effects of this virus. Talk to a trusted adult. They can help you put your feelings in perspective. One last thing. Coronavirus doesn't care where you're from or what your background is. So don't let anyone turn this into an excuse to target someone based on how they look. What he's talking about there is right now in the United States, a lot of Asians are being threatened and attacked because this virus started and came from China. So some, of, some people here think it's if they see an Asian, that it, they're going to give them the coronavirus. It is not true. Working together is how we'll beat this thing. So let's stand up for our neighbors. Okay, I'm a sweaty mess. I gotta rinse off. Oh, don't be so dramatic. Where are you going? I really think you're overreacting. right into the quiz. Number one, each of the following statements is true except viruses come in different types. Viruses infect living cells. Viruses can replicate without hosts. Viruses can cause illnesses. Now, if you remember, when a question says, is true, if anything of that answer is not true, then that cannot be the answer. Do viruses come in different types? They showed us at least four, so yes. Viruses infect living cells. They have to come into a host and get into our cells to be able to replicate. So that's true. Viruses can replicate without hosts. Viruses, are, if they're on these desks in here, they can't do anything until they get into a host. So that was not true. Viruses can cause illnesses? Yes. That's why we are not in school. So this would be correct answer C. Number two, a virus infects a host in order to take in nutrients, make the host sick, make copies of itself, destroy the host cells. I don't 
coronaviruses taking in nutrients. They do make a host sick, but that's not the purpose of the virus. They destroy some of the cells when they get inside and replicate and it destroys the cell. But the purpose of it, it infects a host so that it can make copies of itself, replicate, reproduce, that's all the virus wants to do. Number three, the distinguishing feature of a coronavirus is its size, mobility, shape, or deadliness. If you remember, they showed you a picture with a whole lot of different shaped viruses. And the coronavirus being that one that was like a ball with a whole lot of points coming out saying it looked like a crown. So it is the shape of the virus that makes it, that distinguishes it from the others. Number four, a typical coronavirus infection. And remember this is saying a typical coronavirus infection, not necessarily the COVID-19. It is extremely dangerous, has mild symptoms, cannot spread to humans, is resistant to hand washing. The typical coronavirus is the common cold, which would be has mild symptoms. Number five. Coronavirus infections are likely to be more serious for teens, active adults, frequent travelers, people with weakened immune system. They showed you a picture in there, some older people, and contrary to all of you always calling me old, I'm not in that age group. I'm not that old yet. But I have asthma, so if I got the coronavirus, it could affect me more. Teens, typically, is very mild. Active adults, it's very mild. Frequent travelers are, are basically the reason that the coronavirus has moved around the world. But the people who it's worse for is people with weakened immune systems. We've covered the immune system, you know about when you're sick, it, it has to produce antibodies and everything like that to fight off the infection. So if you have a weakened immune system, you can't fight off the infection and it gets worse. Number six, an outbreak of a virus occurs when symptoms of the virus get worse, the virus spreads to more than one organ, someone dies from the virus, the virus spreads to more and more hosts. An outbreak is when it spreads. It can be an outbreak in, a, in one area, and when this virus started spreading to other countries and then reached the United States, that's when it became, they started calling it the word a pandemic, which is like a worldwide spread of a virus or illness. So this is D. Number seven, what does it mean when a city is quarantined during a virus outbreak? Everyone in the city is infected. No one can enter or leave the city. The city's population is immune to the virus or doctors in the city are developing a cure. Remember, we told you that showing the city with the signs on it said quarantined and had the special little symbols on it is when nobody goes into or comes out of the city. No one can enter or leave the city. Number eight, which practice prevents the spread of germs? Washing your hands often, blowing your nose, reusing the same tissue, or coughing into your hand. The answer for this is obviously washing your hands often. Now, reusing the same tissue, you can't hardly do that with tissue. But when I was a kid, 
My father, my grandparents, my grandfather, they carried what was called a handkerchief, a little cloth square that they folded up and had in their pocket. And when they, they would blow their nose or they'd sneeze or something like that, they'd take their handkerchief out then fold it up and put it back in their pocket then use it again later. I thought that was one of the worst things I ever saw. Now, people today don't carry handkerchiefs unless it's somebody of a much older generation. Coughing into your hand, that's what, when I was a child, they used to tell you, cover your mouth, cover your cough, cover your sneeze. But then when I was in the Air Force in the hospital, it became coughing into your elbow. So you cough here, so then you're not touching things. But washing your hands often, and we need to wash them more often. They said in the movie, after you go to the bathroom, before you eat. Right now, we need to wash our hands more often than that. When you've gone anywhere, when I go into Walmart and come out, I use my hand sanitizer. Can't wash my hands in my truck, but I can use my hand sanitizer. You touch things anywhere. When I leave the school, I'll use my hand sanitizer. And when I get home, I'll wash my hands. Number nine, covering your mouth when you cough or sneeze is recommended to prevent germs from entering your body, get rid of germs from inside your body, avoid getting other people sick, warn other people that you are sick. This answer is avoid getting other people sick. You're trying to stop the spread of your germs when you do that or cover, you know, when you do that. Because when you sneeze, Germs can go to that wall over there. So if you just sneeze out, you're going everywhere. You do this and you cover it and muffle it a little bit. So it's to avoid getting other people sick. Now remember, a lot of people sneezing and coughing aren't even sick. I get my allergy shots every two weeks. I sneeze all the time because of allergies and I'm not sick otherwise than just having allergies and that's to the tree pollens and grass pollens that are starting out right now in the spring. The most reliable source of information about virus outbreak is news headlines, social media, your peers, the World Health Organization. I told you right there in the movie, the World Health Organization, it's also called the WHO, W-H-O. Your peers, they don't know any more than you do probably, Social media is probably the worst place to get your news or advice from. News headlines, they tend to sensationalize the news. They will focus on how many people are dying from this instead of how many people are getting it, surviving just fine. They will try to sensationalize it and make it seem worse than what it is where the World Health Organization is just going to give you statistics and firm study. So this is D. And that's the end of this lesson. The first one doing like this is very strange. And we'll be doing many more. Hopefully we don't have to keep doing this too long. Bye-bye.